your heavenly name I pray. Amen. 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 Go tell it on the mountains, over the hills and everywhere. Go. Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hey, I like that. Get the praise the Lord in harmony. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to welcome all that are here this morning. Glad to see your smiling faces. Yeah, there you go. Hallelujah. And uh, we welcome those that are watching our, via our website, YouTube, Christian World Media, whatever else we have. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank God for technology. Praise God. Um, just one announcement. Next week we will have a Christmas service. So uh, I know some people have family things that go on, and that's okay. But we will have a service in the morning. It'll be a little shorter than probably some will sing a couple songs, uh, uh, share a little bit of the word, and then they have some snackies downstairs. Is that okay? Snackies. Praise God. Uh, but I know some people have family. Uh, you know, Christmas is traditionally of a family thing for them, so uh, no pressure. But if you can come, come. It's not, unu- it's not usual that we get Christmas on a Sunday, do we? It's usually during the week sometime. I don't know when the last time Christmas was on a Sunday, but it's, it's been a, since my memory. Praise God. I'm sure it happened before, but I praise God. Hallelujah. So uh, my message this morning is no other name. What do you think that name is there? Wainer, Jesus, amen, praise God. So if you have a Bible, we're going to turn to Acts chapter 4, verses 7 to 12. And uh, talking about the name of Jesus, it excites me. I love that name. I hope you never get tired of hearing about the name of Jesus. We talk a lot about it here. And um, some people will, will actually take an offense to say, you guys talk about Jesus too much. If we're not talking about Jesus, who's the Savior of the world, who else are we going to talk about? We're not going to talk about me, because that'll put you to sleep. Amen. So Acts chapter 4, verses 7 through 12, we're going to read here. And this is after the instance where, where um, John and or Peter and John were at the gate called Beautiful, and they uh, there was a man lame there, and they said, silver and gold, we have none. And in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And the person rolled up, rolled him walk, and he was just leaping. And you think everybody would, what, you would have been excited about that. What's Dougie doing? <laughs> Amen. Everyone would be excited about that. It was a miraculous healing. But no, some people were upset. The high prestige people, the people that were the Pharisees, the scribes, were said about it. So, uh, Paul, uh, Peter kind of answers them this and some of the questions they were asking, uh, who, who, by what authority can you do this? So, in verse 7, we're going to start. He said, when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, something about that Holy Ghost, Gets you excited. Get, you can't keep it in you. Said unto them, Ye rulers and of the people and the elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of good deed done to this impotent man, by what means is he made whole? Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him, that this man stand here before you whole. This is a stone which was set at naught of your build, of you builders, which the, to become the head of the corner. Neither is salvation, is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given unto man whereby we must be saved. There's only one name. And his name is Jesus. No other name can bring us salvation, can it? But is that name truly Jesus? No, I've been reading and looks. I've seen these 
these people before coming out and talking about that Jesus is not really the name that we're supposed to proclaim. Oh, there's some Jewish sects and there's some other people out there that claim, no, if you really want the pure salvation message, you got to call him what? Yeshua or Yahweh or even Yahushua is the name that we should use because the Greek translation is wrong. You have to use the Hebrew translation which talks about this. And those people are... I think they're a little wacky. You know what I say to those people? <laughs> and I'm going to explain. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because you can go into a whole big study on the names. And you, you, know, you know that they lost the pronunciation of God for a while? From about 6 B.C. to about 1,000 A.D. because they thought the name was so reverent that they couldn't pronounce it. So you never seen the symbols Y-H-W-H? You know, how would you pronounce that? They lost the pronunciation. And even in their services, they would not mention God. They would mention Lord in, in lieu of the word Yahweh because they thought it was so holy and reverent. They couldn't speak it. Man wasn't worthy to speak it. Now, I ain't going to take long to argue with this because everything I've been blessed with in my life has come through the name of Jesus. Now, if you look at other languages, Jesus name is pronounced differently, doesn't it? This is the English, and most uh, countries do pronounce Jesus as we do, but there are some different uh, pronunciations of it. In Welsh, it's called Aisu. In Swahili, it's Yeshu. In Romania, it's Aisus. Italian is Gishu. In Cherokee, is Tasisa. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but T-S-I-S-A-N, and so on. You can find various languages. But does that take any more, uh, take an importance away of who Jesus is? Are we wrong by saying the name of Jesus? Everything we say and do, every, we bless everything in the name of Jesus. No. Our late worship is not in vain. My sister... It says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that name is Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. Jesus. Amen. The Old Testament prophets desired to know the name of this God that would come to save them. They had known the attributes of God, Elohim, Jehovah, Jireh. Now, now we'll describe a couple of these things before. For in Isaiah, Isaiah 7, 14, it says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, is Emmanuel his name? Emmanuel means with us God. Well, God was with us, but that wasn't his name. That was an attribute, a title, of what he's going to be like. He's going to be our Savior. He is God. He became God. God became man. In Matthew 1, 18 through 20, it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So we have the revelation of what the name of God or the, our Savior here, Jesus, in our lifetime. The prophets knew about the birth. They knew about his life, the power, the death, his resurrection, and salvation that the Messiah would bring. But they didn't have the name of Jesus that we have today. But they should have. Before, they, they had all the signs, all the prophecies before them, sitting before them of where he was going to be born. And, and they could even narrow it down to the time, considering what the circumstances were in the world. And they had the star. 
but they still missed it. Because like you said, we were, they were looking for something else. Jesus tells us in John 5, 43, I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. So Jesus came in his Father's name. So what was his Father's name? In the, in the Hebrew, it was Jehovah, or Yahweh. God is so many things to so many of us, isn't he? We could take hours to talk about his attributes and what he's done for each one of us, how he saved us, how he changed us, how he delivered us. And I'm going to talk just about a couple here. One is Je he's Jehovah Nissi, he, or the Bible says he is our banner. For in Exodus 17 through 10 through 16, and uh, we just heard this related to a couple of weeks ago from Brother Bob. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hands that Israel prevailed. And when he let it down his hands, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed upon his, up his hands, the one on the other side, the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will early put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nissi. For he said, Because the Lord has sworn that, that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. So he's a banner, a standard that we laid before. He's Jehovah Nissi, as Exodus tells there. He also is their provider, and his name is Jehovah Jireh. Genesis 22, 13 to 14. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold him, a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be be seen. God provided a different sacrifice. He didn't have to sacrifice his son. Abraham would. In the New Testament, it tells us that Abraham would because he believed that God could raise him up again. That's all his faith in God was. That even if he took his life, God, that was the promise, the promised seed. God would take care of him. He is also our healer. Praise God. Jehovah Rapha, in Exodus 15, 26 and, it's, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Praise God. We thank God for healing. And what will we ask healing for? What name do we use when we proclaim healing? Jesus. He's our Jehovah Shalom, our peace. For in Judges 6, 23, 24, And the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. Then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. Unto this day is in the Oprah, not Oprah Winfrey, Oprah of the Bizzites. So he is our peace. He's Jehovah Ra. In Psalms 23, 1, says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He's our shepherd. He's Jehovah Siskanu. In Psalms 23, 3, it says, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesakes. He is our righteousness. The Bible says our righteousness is what? Filthy rags. We can't live a life good enough to please God. It's only by the blood of Jesus Christ that we can stand before him. Jeremiah 23, 6 also says this, In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Ooh, I like how they capitalize it. The Lord our righteousness. He's also Jehovah Shammah. In Ezekiel 48, 35, it said it was around about 8, 
15,000. He was measuring a, tent, a city there. 18,000 measures. And the name of the city from that day shall be called the Lord is there. He's always there. He's always near us. The Bible says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Oh, thank God for that promise that we have. Hallelujah. No matter what trouble we're, we get ourselves in, we just call on the name of Jesus, don't we? He also is a holy God, isn't he? Jehovah Mekadish in Leviticus 27 8 says, Sanctify yourselves therefore and be ye holy, for I am the Lord your God. And you shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord which sanctify you. He sets us apart. He separates us. We're in this world, but not of this world, the Bible proclaims. Thank God. <laughs> this world's a mess. And it's only getting messier as, we, as it goes on. So we have all those attributes and many more in the Old Testament speaking of who God is, how he, he you know, what he can represent to us. But we can do it in all in one name. We only need one name that describes all, all those attributes that are involved in it. His name is Jesus. Amen. Jesus was that and so much more. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. All those, all five of those things are wrapped up in Jesus. We don't, we can call him wonderful because of what he's done for us. We call him the Prince of Peace because the peace that he gives us and the struggles that we have. We can call him a counselor for when we troubles, have struggles. We can look into this word or even ask him and he'll give us counsel. He is also the mighty God, the everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. He's also so many other things. He is our comforter, isn't he? In John 14, 26, it says, But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send him my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I said unto you, I thank God for the comforter. He is my hope. It's easy to get look around this, on this, and when we're going through troubles, and, you know, we look at Carmen's mom. She's at, at the end of her life, and and my kid's mother also. And you go there, and you go, man. Sometimes you just don't have that hope it disappears, do you? But the Bible says in First Peter one three, it says, "Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope." By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the, the dead. Our hope is not in this earth. No, I say I, I, I say I love my life. I love the, what this world. I don't like winter. I'm beginning to like it less and less as you get older. I don't know. Unless you're an ice fisherman or a skier or something like that. I can't see why, why God brings snow. But, but we have hope because in the spring what happens? The snow melts. Flowers start blooming, things turn green. It's all restored again. And we have a hope from Jesus Christ that we have an eternity coming soon. Praise God. If, if we live till the rapture, it'll be then. If, if we don't make it till then, it'll be sooner. He's also our light. John 8, 12 says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world, this little light of mine. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Like we said, we this world becoming people lost hope. This world becoming darker and darker. But we always have that light of Jesus Christ. He's also my joy. Romans 15, 13 says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. We look at saints and saints of God, and, and they, they go through trials and, and, and tribulations just like everybody else. And we wonder, well, man, how come they still have a smile on their face? How come they can be at a funeral of a loved one and have a smile and, and think of pleasant thoughts? 
because God has put them in joy. We know this, this is not it. I, I, so I, can, I don't know how people can live, an atheist could live through life thinking, well, this is it. We're going to go through this miserable world, have suffering and pain, and then when we die, there's nothing. Or we reincarnate and come back as a mouse or something that our cat will bat around. What, what a miserable life. I, how, how can you... And, 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 and I see stories and horrors, stories again of atheists when they get older and they all of a sudden have a come-to-Jesus moment. Because they realize without God, they are miserable. Life is miserable. But God gives you joy through the power and the power of the Holy Ghost. He's also our victory. In 1 Corinthians 15, 55 through 57, it says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So to those that say that, ah, you guys are not using the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus is not what you should be using to be saved. I say again. <laughs> For really, in our lives, what saved us? Not ourselves. Our faith in what? Jesus. Amen. By faith we are saved, not of works. Through him. When I got the Holy Ghost, you know who I was praising? I wasn't going to say Yahweh. And I said, those ain't wrong. That's, that's the name of God. I wasn't saying Jehovah, Jireh, provide me the Holy Ghost. Jehovah Nissi, be my standard. And I have no problem because it, you know, I said, that's, that's God. But all I had to do was say, Jesus, I love you. And when I got lost in that, that, that moment and the Spirit of God just came upon you and started speaking in other tongues, whew, awesome, wasn't it? 65 years? 66 years she had the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Awesome. And when I got baptized, what name did I take? Jesus, I was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of my sins. Whew. I didn't have to go through all, all those names of God in the Old Testament that, that his attributes and say, well, that, um, which one am I going to pick? Which one should you pick, will you pick, Pastor? Are you going to pick Jehovah Sikhanu, Jehovah Makadish? All you had to do was say the words, Jesus, didn't you? 1 Timothy 3.16, it says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up unto glory. We didn't have the scripture on there, but I, I have it here. God in flesh. God became flesh. What a miracle. If anything you can think of this Christmas, is that God was up, well, we're, he's everywhere, so he's not restricted to anywhere. The Bible says in John 4, 24, that God is a spirit. Can you confine a spirit? You know, we, we hear the word omnipresent. Wayne, he's everywhere. You can't con constrict him a thing. But that, that God, that God created all this stuff, decided he loved you, Cindy Harrison, so much that you become a child, a baby, take upon the flesh. And he knew it. He, God, God from the beginning knew what was going to happen. If, the Bible says he looked with great joy for us. So as the worship team is ready to come, there's only one name that matters. What's that name? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And in this time of year, that's the name to remember. 
But, you know, they say, keep Christ in Christmas. We have to. The thing that gets, gets me upset most, or used to get me upset most, was the commercialism that was in our world. How, how they promoted a man in a red suit and black boots and, and made him the thing that they worshipped. I worship Jesus. And this morning, the altar is open. If you're watching, we want to invite you to obey Acts 2.38 where it says, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. It's right there. What name? Jesus. name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for that promise is unto you and to all of them, unto your children and to all that call upon the name of the Lord. Praise God. The altar is open, so go. Tell it. Tell it on the mountain <laughs> over the hills.